Welcome back to the Righteous Rich podcast. We have uh, Muhammad Isa today with us, one of the brothers in our community. And uh, let me start with the Karak. I think Karak is somewhere uh, which has motivated him maybe or some story came out from there which made him to write books and change his life and wherever he is today and how did he come to that position. Let's know from him. What's the story behind Karak? Chai Karak. Chai Karak is, uh, is a book not about making Karak. Chai Karak is a book about customer service. And, and there is a, a story behind uh, calling the book Chai Karak. It was an inspiration from someone inside the story. I cannot reveal so much about the, uh, the trigger, but I can tell you uh, Chai Karak, a customer service story, is one of the best books that I have published And this book took me many places. Uh, I made the most money out of this book, not by selling the book, but, but uh, companies are calling me to, to speak about the concepts of the Chai Karak because Chai Karak is a manifesto for customer service. I have nine, nine principles of uh, customer service. C-H-A-I. So Chai Karak. Okay. The last... Alphabet and the Karak is K, and, and this is the most important thing. It applies to customer service. It applies to anything in life. And that, that principle is simple. Keep trying harder. So in, in whatever you do in your life, whether you're a salesperson, you're a marketing executive, you're an engineer, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, keep trying harder. So Chai Karak is a, a universal message uh, that, that applies not only to our region, uh, the GCC, it applies everywhere. Because when I published this book, it was published in the U.S., and I had a big argument with the publishing house. They said, Karak doesn't sell. No one knows Karak. <laughs> I said, no, no, it sells. Okay. In, in, in the U.S., maybe, but in our region, it's, 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 it will sell definitely. They said, no, no. I said, look, man, I, I need to publish this book. Mm. Name it whatever you want to name it, mm. and let's go ahead. So... He, he named it something, and then the editor who reviewed the text, he said, no, 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 no. The, the inside does not match the title of the book, so we need to change the title again. So he called me up. I said, I told you, try <laughs> correct. <laughs> I asked him, I said, it's a story. And I, and I told him, look, I have a large audience. You have the GCC. You have India. You have Pakistan. You have Bangladesh. You have Afghanistan. They all, all drink. Yeah. <laughs> Tea with milk or chai curry. Yes. So uh, it's enough for me. If getting mm. this kind of uh, big market is enough. Mm -hmm. So that's the chai curry story. But uh, how, how did you get into like any karak? It's, it's just an abbreviation you came up with. Yes. So mm. as I told you, there, is, there isn't much I can reveal now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> If you want to know, it's on chapter nine and within okay. the book. So okay. I don't want to spoil it because people always ask me, what did you call, what did you call uh -huh. a chai curry? I said, It's, It's a book. part of the world. So the, the book is started as, uh, as, uh, as a reflection on a very bad experience, customer service experience. And I was so upset that uh, one day I thought, you know what, I will not uh, create a tweet, I will not uh, post on Facebook, I will not post on LinkedIn, I write an entire book on the experience. And that entire book uh, became now a series of books because... Uh, today I just uh, had finalized the third edition it will be printed in Bahrain and we will have illustrations within the book people wearing thobe and ghitra so I can imagine it's very local uh, then the designer of the book uh, I, I work with a company called Cartoon Planet uh, he's now designing another book in the series called Karak Express where I give 247 insights on customer service, and that book took me so much in terms of effort, in terms of time, because I had to research 100, or not 100, 1,836 resources on customer service to come up with 247 pieces of advice for the readers. So that's the second book. The third book will be called Karaka Break, where I share different stories on customer service. The fourth one will be Social Karak. And this will be a research-based uh, book where I go and scan the social media for angry customers and what they say about the companies they are dealing with. So when you, when you look at an angry customer, uh, to me, this is the best way to 
progress <laughs> uh-huh. and to make things better in your company. Uh-huh. Because angry customers, uh, they will tell you what, what went wrong and they will tell you how you can fix it most of the time. Mm. Uh, and angry customers can be those who are silent, just like these books I have over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they were printed with a different prints than this book. Yes. Okay. Uh, I wasn't happy with uh, one uh, press, so I just moved my business to someone else, and mm. I never complained to them. Mm. So they didn't follow up. They didn't say, Muhammad, is there any new books you're printing? They didn't. Nothing. So they mm-hmm. lost the entire business. So if you have an angry customer who speaks or writes, that's the best thing to, to look for. Oh. Uh, see what uh, went wrong, fix it. And that's uh, simple advice, but companies don't do that. Uh, this is a book because of the experience. What, did you have any experience of writing or uh, how did you get motivated? What, what motivated you? Who inspired you? I, I like to share this story. The first book I published was in 2010. So that, that, that's almost uh, 11 years ago. And that book wasn't actually a book. It was a master's dissertation. But uh, there is a story, again, behind the master's dissertation. We were set up in groups within uh, our master's education. And our instructor said, uh, discuss within the groups what uh, could be research topics that you can undertake for your thesis. So... There was a Kuwaiti gentleman, uh, he works with investors, and I told him, why don't you do something on investor relations? It's your field. He said, no, 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 I, I already checked on this. There, are, there aren't any resources on this topic. So if I take it, it will be very tough on me to finish my research. Why don't you take it? And he challenged me. And I said, okay, I'll do it. So I did it. I had uh, made the research. Uh, I received a distinction on the research, and uh, by that time, it was around 2009, 2000, 2009 late 2009, uh, there was a conference in Dubai. I booked a ticket, went to Dubai, I attended the conference on investor relations. And the, the idea was, I wanted to take this dissertation copy and give it to the chairman of the society. His name is Arif, he's an Emirati. And when I went to Arab, he said, you need to meet Michael. I said, who's Michael? He said, he's a Polish gentleman, but he works in London. You should meet him. And I met Michael. When Michael saw the, the, the research, he said, Muhammad, you need to meet TJ. I said, who's TJ? He said, he's a British guy living in Bahrain. So, okay, I'll meet TJ. So TJ came to my office. We spent around four hours going through the results I had in my research. And as he walked away, he said, this should be published as a book. And I told him, TJ, I know nothing about publishing. He said, I know a Bahraini gentleman who does, but he lives in Belarus, and lucky you, he's in Bahrain now. Say, so, okay, let's meet. So I met with Jalal. He said, okay, let's publish it. And, and we published it, and, and that was the book. But, you know, I had to make tweaks to make it a business book rather than a research uh, a degree publication. Okay, so that, that, that was the start. Then came the revelation from a friend of mine. We were friends since university. He, he sent me a message, or he called me rather. He said, Mohammed Mabrouk, congratulations on the book. It's 2010. Can you imagine this? If you publish one book per year for the next 10 years, you will have 10 books by 2020. Yeah. And I thought, Sharif, that's a, that's a great idea, but uh, let's see how it goes. So 2010, there was a book. 2011. 2010, there was a book, uh, and there was an unfinished book there as well. Mm-hmm. I started writing a book on the pilgrimage to Mecca. It's called The Three Weeks with God, my pilgrimage to Mecca. I have written around 26,000 words in that book, okay? Yeah, but I did not publish it uh, yet because I reached the critical stage of the pilgrimage where I thought, oh, this is heavy now. Let Let me wait on this. And the weight has 
taken me so much, you know, until today I did not finish the book. But the, the interesting thing about uh, this book is the cover of the book was not designed by a Muslim. It was designed by a Christian based in New Zealand. And this is one message I want to tell people through your podcast is sometimes we need to go beyond our environment. Because if I gave it to a, a Muslim designer or someone from this region who lived in this region, he would uh, simply put the Holy Kaaba on the cover, a picture of pilgrim, pilgrims, and, 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 and that was it. And this is not unique at all. The, the Kiwi designer made this. He, he had a picture of a desert, and there were footprints. And there was sun at the end. So the only uh, tweak I made on the cover was to change the location of the sun because I told him the shade is not in sync with the sun direction. That was it. So sometimes we need to go beyond our environment to look for new ideas. And, and we, this is what people do all the time. They, they stick to their environment. They stick to their network. They never go beyond this. You need to go beyond. If you want to see new things, you want to experience uh, new things, you need to go beyond. That's why in 2015, in July, I went to Washington, D.C. I attended one of the best conferences in my life. It was the National Speakers Association. I went there. I was blown away. The, the conference was so good, I had to come up with a plan for the sessions that I was planning to attend. In conferences, in large ones, you have the main events, and then you have what they call the workshops. Okay, you have different lines. So I had option one, two, three. If I don't get option one, I go to two. If I don't get two, I go to three. In many of the cases, I didn't get one, two, three. Because people go there, they are hungry to learn from the speakers. And the organization of the event was superb. I, you know, I still talk about it. We are in 2021 now. So you need to go beyond. And, and through that uh, conference, from the first day, I came to discover uh, an app that, were, were, that helps you in making creative videos. Even if you're not a designer, it's called Animoto. And when I came to know about Animoto, I thought to myself, this is it. If I don't get anything out of this conference, Animoto is enough for me. So that's why you need to go beyond your environment. You need to go beyond your network to get more ideas in, into your life. So that's, uh, that's, how, that's how these, all, these all books started. Uh, Imagine, yeah. yeah. Just an idea. One yeah, idea. absolutely. So 2010, there was this uh, investor relation book. 2011, nothing. 2012, nothing. 2013, I participated in a book uh, promoted by an American author. Uh, she called four chapters for submission. I gave her three. <laughs> mm. I gave her three chapters. Mm. So one, option one, option two, option three. Mm. And this is what people need to know as well. You know, you need to build options. You need to have the other person say yes to something. Wow. Okay? If I gave her one chapter and she didn't like it, she wouldn't accept me in the, mm. in the book. But I gave her three. Choose the best one you like. Mm. That's what she did. 2014, I participated in, a, in another book. It was an Amazon bestseller. Mm. Uh, it was uh, written by 50 uh, certified speech coaches, yeah. including myself. Uh, and, uh, it's a big question. It's called uh, World Class Speaking in, in okay. Action. Okay? Okay. Uh, and, and I remember creating uh, the marketing campaign with the team. Mm. We were just monitoring the Amazon page, we just had to refresh, refresh, mm. refresh, refresh mm. until it was a bestseller. And uh, we wanted to make it number one, but we couldn't. Mm. I, I, I think we reached 14 or something. But uh, it was an experience in itself. Then 2015, there was nothing. 2016, I co-wrote a book with Brian Tracy, a famous author yeah. and renowned speaker. Larry King is also there. Yeah, Larry King also in 2020 and uh, in, 20, in 2018. 2020, I uh, co-wrote a book with Jay Abraham. He's a billionaire uh, based in the U.S. He's a marketing genius. And, and the list goes on and on. And, uh, 
And uh, if you remember, Sharif said, uh, if you write one book each year, mm. you will have 10 books in 2020. Mm. I never counted my books, mm. whether the ones I participated in or wrote on my own or I edited as the main editor-in-chief where I bring different authors to, to be part of the book. But last week, I, uh, someone asked me to write a bio for, uh, for a website. I said, okay, let me, let me do the count. And today I have 16. Yeah, 16, wow. and hopefully I'll be printing two more before the year end. So that will take it to 18. Next year, definitely I'll, I'll, I'll reach 20. So, confidence level is exponential. Yeah, because, you know, now for me, writing a book is, is, is like a piece of cake. The writing book is like a lot of myths. It's, it's just any, you cannot write so easily. You need plan, you need time, you have to leave your job or... So many doubts and self-doubts, no vision for that. Well, I don't, I, 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 even I think sometimes I feel like, okay, I did not get the context. I don't have a proper context in my life. Once I have the why, then I will write the book like that. You know? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's not like that at all. You don't have to leave your job. <laughs> yeah. You can definitely uh, yes. uh, continue in your employment and, yes. and write a book. It depends on what book do you want to write. Let me give you a, a, a little... Uh, uh, example I travel a lot mm. and I have many travel experiences so a few years ago I started an Instagram account called Nomad973 and Nomad means traveler and 973 is our international code for dining uh, Bahrain <laughs> so uh, the Bahraini Nomad if you wish mm. so the whole idea of that Instagram account was to capture my experiences briefly Mm -hmm. And when I write my travel book, I can go back to my Instagram account mm. and look at these topics, look at, look at the pictures. Because when you look at the picture, it, the picture will bring you back to that memory, yeah. the, the feelings, the emotions that went into uh, that uh, uh, trip or uh, picnic or whatever you want to call it. So that's one thing that I did. Last year, I started writing uh, stories uh, for Google Maps and uh, GDN Life. I stopped, but uh, I need to go back and continue writing. Mm -hmm. And the, the essence of writing is, to me, is uh, to have a story. To have a story. Just as if we're talking now, just speak like that, write like that, so that people are attracted to what you're saying. But if you start with uh, using big words, and uh, speaking like a lawyer, <laughs> no one will read your book. You know, one time there was one highly acclaimed book by a professor in one of the top universities in the UK. And I was in London. I bought the book. And I kid you not, I did not pass the introduction. Oh. I bought the book. Mm -hmm. The book is good. Mm. It's a highly acclaimed. But the introduction, Heavy. the level of referencing he used. So you read, you read a few words and there is a... Bracket, uh, the year, and the last name of the author of that study. I thought this is no. <laughs> I'm not. I will not do this. So, so you need to program your mind to read a few words, skip the brackets, read a few words. It's not very smooth. Mm. Well, when you have a story, then uh, it, it becomes much easier on you and uh, the reader. So uh, let's let's build on this travel experience. So the idea is there. I want to write on travel. Now we come to an important topic. What is the title? Mm. So you can say the Bahraini Ibn Battuta or the mm. Bahraini Magellan, what, what mm. have you. But then mm. these topics are, or titles are not creative. Yes. So the title I chose, and again, this was based on a real life experience, Walking on Thin Ice. Okay, mm. that was the title. Now you have the title. Everything is, is linked to the title now. Okay. Now, what is behind walking on thin ice? Yeah, I was in Austria and there was a frozen lake and I walked on the lake. I was very excited like a kid. It's the first time I experienced this thing. I was shouting, it's frozen, it's frozen. <laughs> so someone was taking a video of me. The third guy got so excited. He came and he st stood next to me. 
And suddenly we hear the cracking of the oh. frozen ice. Oh and we jumped out of the, uh, out of the lake. So that's the, the title of the book, Walking on Thin Ice. Then we repeated this in, uh, in the France. And uh, in the France, I had my left foot go inside the snow, or, or, the, uh, or the ice rather. And I had to jump using my uh, right uh, thighs, uh, thighs to, to avoid sinking. Because when you sink in a frozen lake, you don't know what will happen. Because if there is a current, mm. the current will take you away from the hole that you fell from. And uh, it's fr- freezing water. Maybe your body will not react to whatever you're telling it to, to do. So you'll be gone. So this is Walking on Thin Ice. Now you have the title. You have a story behind it. You can use the story for the introduction because mm. people will be thinking, what is the story of the title? So then you can go from there. Now, we talked about the Instagram. We talked about the title. I created a cover. Mm. When you create a cover, it inspires you. To write, okay? Wow. So then, in June this year, most of us, when we travel, even if you don't travel, how many photos do you have on your iPhone or your uh, Samsung or whatever you Every use? Every six months, I have to cut down, but it comes around 1,000, 2,000. Yeah. See, uh, for me, 20,000 is not uh, something unusual. <laughs> okay. So I will cut it down to 15, 14,000. It will come back again to 20,000. Mm. Mm. So if, if you ask me, what is the best picture you have? I, I cannot tell you. Yes. Because there are 20,000 uh, photos. And, and this is only on your device. What about the ones on the cloud? What about yes. the ones in the hard disk drives? So in, in June this year, I thought, okay, let, let, me, let me choose 120 pictures that I will print and put in the old-fashioned travel albums. <laughs> And do you know how long it took me to do that? Mm. It took me around a month okay. to choose from all the pictures that I have done. So I printed the pictures. They are in, in an album, three albums rather. And then I thought, okay, let, let me build more on this. What can I do? So I created this. Mm. I created 55, picture, 55 pictures, fabulous memories, okay? And... For the camera, is it clear in the yes. camera? Yeah. yeah. So these photos are in Arizona mm. in the U.S. And this is one of the adventures that I've made. You know, wow. you walk on a glass. The glass is in the air. Uh, the height of the uh, platform is 1.8 kilometers. Mm-hmm. And underneath you is a valley, part wow. of the Grand Canyon. So these are the photos. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. Then what I have done is I have... Uh, taking all these pictures, yeah? Uh, this is me with the jersey of uh, Lionel Messi. Mm-hmm. This is the uh, replica of Elvis Presley car. So these are photos that I have. And in the beginning of the book, or the, this printout, I don't call it a book, I have captions for each of the photos. Mm. Now, this is 55 photos. Now I have 111 photos. Yes. So I'm building and building and building and building. Then when I come and I want to write, I can just come over here. This is me on the upside down house in, mm. in Australia. Oh, wow. I can talk about this experience, okay? Yes. So in this, in this picture, I'm in Munich. I can talk about an attraction behind this building. So you can see how I can build pictures. Or build the stories, rather. Now, this is fine and dandy. You have uh, photos, you have pictures, you have uh, the Instagram. What else can you make to make the reader's experience more um, lively, more emotionally Mm. uh, connected with you? So, this is a stone. (laughs) Okay? This is a stone. And, you know, I hope one day... No one will throw it away from my house, you know. Okay. Someone could say, what, what, what is this stone doing in okay. our house? They'll okay. Just throw it. Mm. This stone is very important to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went to Marrakesh in 2018. Uh, I was a speaker in a, in a conference. And 
And the Swiss are very, very generous. I told them, we don't have direct flights from Bahrain to Marrakesh, so I, I need more time so that when I speak in the conference, I, I, I do not be tired with the audience. Mm-hmm. Say, okay, just give us the dates, okay. and we'll book the hotel and ticket for you. And they were very generous. So I took two days before the conference, two days after the conference, and I had fun. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was like a tourist, you know? Okay. So I went to the uh, old souk in Marrakesh, and I booked uh, two uh, day trips from Marrakesh. And one of them was uh, visiting what they call the Orica waterfalls. Mm-hmm. So we had to climb yeah. and climb and like climb. That. And ultimately, this stone is from the height of 1,800 meters. Wow. So this is, this is very significant to me. So sometimes bringing these kind of things, I'm not saying everyone should go and collect the stones, <laughs> but you know, there are things that you, uh, you buy from uh, your trips. Uh, they can be the anchor of your stories. So there are many things people can do to, to write a book. Sometimes mm-hmm. you should ask yourself, what do people ask me very often mm. for advice, for example? Right. And then you start very from there. Awesome. If you want to have a, a process-oriented uh, suggestion, there is the London School of Journalism where they have writing personal history. Mm. And they have the modules. You have a mentor who will uh, correct your uh, submissions and give you feedback. By the end of that uh, course, you have all your uh, chapters ready. And from the beginning, you can ask the mentor, let's focus on on the business side of my life. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk too much on my personal uh, family or my life. Mm -hmm. I want to focus. And the mentor will just help you through that. Interesting. Yeah. So there are so many ways where you can go and seek help. Yeah. Yeah. So just start. That's That's the most important thing. You need to start somewhere. And the first thing you need to start is thinking that writing books is not as challenging as uh, people think. So start. It's it's just I any mean, you gave so, so many examples, which is which is really motivating anybody. Any especially like I was like uh, I've been waiting, waiting, waiting. I have the outline. I'm still not able to write the chapters. Which is like any sometimes you're like okay, this is not for me maybe, but. Uh, there is benefit also. What all benefits you got? What what all? Uh, how it has helped you going in your journey when it comes to book writing? Okay, I'll, I I like to, uh, as I told you before we started recording, I like to give real real advice, yes. you know, because there are some speakers and some trainers they will come and tell you believe in yourself, yeah. uh, the sky is the limit, and <laughs> follow your passion. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't. I don't like this at all. I don't yes. like this at all. And and if someone uh, listening to me now and they think this is the right approach to be a famous speaker, well, uh, be a famous speaker, but no one remember you as uh, someone who changed their life. So, back to your question: uh, How did uh, writing books affect my life? Yeah. See, since I published uh, the book, the first one, uh, Investor Relations. Uh, book in 2010. I became a regular speaker in conferences on corporate governance and investor relations. Mm. I appeared on many newspaper interviews. Uh, I appeared on the Banker magazine uh, uh, interview. I had three pages, uh, you know. And it it gives you publicity. And when you get uh, publicity, you get things that you don't get in normal due course. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, You become known. When you become known, you get more business. You get um, more uh, connections. uh, And sometimes people introduce, he's an author of a book. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So so it helps in in marketing yourself. And uh, this is not something new I invented. This is something old. When you have a book, people look at you at a different level. Mm. And in, in 2001... It requires discipline. There yeah. Some character which has to be built. Yes, absolutely. Not anyone will write a book. That's yes. what people think. In 2001, I bought a book, 101 Ways to Promote Yourself. And one of the ideas, write a book. Write a book. Now, let's say uh, you're a prospect. I'm here for uh, some selling. And if I come and I give you a collection of books, in your mind... The credibility Muhammad Isa has is, yes. okay? 
And when you have credibility, you can do things. You can sell. Right. You can influence. Now, if someone uh, tells me, uh, you, you are speaking about startups. Oh, what do you know about startups? I say, well, <laughs> see, this, uh, this book is about startups. Okay. And when you talk about startups, you need to have sales. And this book is about sales. And you need to manage your career, whether you're in a startup yes. or you're an employee. And this is another book on a startup. So I know a thing or two about startups. Then they cannot argue. Yeah. Yeah. So again, building credibility mm, on, mm, uh, mm, mm. on 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 what you do. So <laughs> there are many is, many ways. Is, and 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 one thing people should know is, uh, and this is an advice from uh, my longtime friend. His name is uh, Steve Royston. He's a British. Mm-hmm. He's uh, well into his sixties, uh, and he told me once. He asked me this. He said, "Muhammad, do you know how to make a, a million dollar from books?" Mm-hmm. I said, how? I said, you start with a billion, you spend, you spend, you spend, <laughs> then you make a million in sales. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is the truth. This okay. is the truth. If you think about it, you don't, you don't make so much money out of money. direct selling. Yes. Unless you're a famous, uh, very famous author. You're selling in the millions of, uh, of copies. Right. Right. And you're perhaps like Robin Sharma. Right. He has a large following. Any new book you will release, everyone will buy that book. Okay? Yes. That's it. Without they they, thinking, they yeah. don't think. Yes. It's Robin, it yes. must be good. Finished. So unless, unless you reach that stage and you have a marketing agency behind you, you yes, you will make money. But the, the way to make money in, in books is to have the book as your business card. Mm. Mm. This, is, this, is, this is the book I recently wrote. Now, tomorrow I have a course. One of the things that I will do is I'll be distributing these books to the participants. Interesting. I mean, you think, oh, he has a book, huh? <laughs> no, he has three books. These are different <laughs> books. Oh, okay. Of course. All right. So, so now, they, they, okay, let's listen to him. Let's listen to him. He that looks is heavy. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is one way to market yourself, to, to write a book. But, you know, sometimes it's not about marketing yourself. It's about giving value to the community. Mm. I believe when you give value to the community, you will receive value. Right. As simple as that. The more you give, the more you get. Some people will tell you how. I say, I don't know how. But eventually, uh, the value will come back to you. Mm-hmm. Eventually, the value will come to you. Mm-hmm. Through a phone call, through an email, through yes. a meeting. You never know. Yes. Uh, this, um, from October until uh, beginning of 2020, Mm-hmm. I have many courses lined up. They were, they were not there yeah. in my calendar. Yes. Just one call mm-hmm. through a friend of mine he introduced me to someone, and that someone is filling my calendar with courses. Wow. Yeah. Why? Because now we have this profile. You are an executive. Uh, you have books. Mm-hmm. You have been training, you have been speaking here and there, so you have all the ingredients. Presence all, all yeah. over. All, over all right, so, so, so that, that's, uh, that helps. If I didn't have books, I, one time I was called for a, a CEO interview for one of the uh, companies in Bahrain. Didn't work out at the end. They found someone with, with a particular experience that I didn't have. Uh, the salary was very good. Mm-hmm. The, the benefits were so good. And one of the reasons that they called me for that interview, they, they told me this. We wanted to meet that person who wrote a book with Larry King. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's, that's the... Uh, that's big, big yeah. appreciation. Yeah, so, so sometimes uh, it's not about making that sale. It's not about uh, uh, making benefits. money. No, no, sometimes it's, it's, it helps you in reaching things. Sometimes it's, it's the other way around. You're not thinking about whatever we talked about. Mm, mm. You're leaving something for your kids, for your family, exactly. for the generations to come. Okay, see, oh, our father went to so many places. Oh, look, at, he was crazy. He jumped from an airplane. Okay, so, so this is what they'll think. This is a legacy you're leaving. So sometimes it's not about just writing a book and making money out of it. I had a call yesterday from a friend of mine. He just released a book. He said, I need to make the money back, whatever I spend. <laughs> And I was so busy, I didn't want to give him this kind of lecturing now. Okay. That No, 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 don't think that way. You know, just make money through the book, not by selling the book. Yes. So this is, uh, this is something. And, and if you think about it, this is content marketing. Yes. 
many companies, consultancy companies, they will uh, publish white papers. They will publish research on their websites mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for you to see that they know their subject. Yes. So this is content marketing at the end. Right. That's it. Uh, when it is digital age, it's like kind of challenging for anybody to take benefit from from something which is like you know writing books or uh, getting into you know publishing it and also getting publishers to work on you. It's a lot of work for them. Absolutely. If you see online now, everybody is becoming online stars. Yeah. And everything is although. They have to go to the old style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Traditional yeah. things will yeah. not end. This uh, publishing will never end because I'll tell you something. Let's use this example. Mm-hmm. I come to you, you're a prospective customer. I give you this book as a gift. You don't like books. You give this book to your secretary. Yes. Then she or he gives it to someone else. And... Someone it goes to right person. Yeah. So <laughs> someone said a book is uh, is having legs. It will never stop walking. It's a marketing tool that has legs. So people well, don't so throw so legs. So uh, so uh, so uh, so people so don't throw books, rather. If, if I give you a magazine, you throw it. Okay? <laughs> so if, if I give you a magazine and there was an article on me in the magazine, yeah, it's, it's good. It gives you credibility. But again, it's a magazine. It's not a book. Mm. And depending on which magazine is this, will will decide whether you think highly of, of the article or not. So books are great because they can promote you everywhere. How does it feel like you know, working like this for the last 10 years? It's like you do it out of love. Or you do it because there is a need. This is something which I ask. You know, Some people do it because there is a need. You know, but some love it, they love this, that's why they do it. For me, it's, it's, it's all about leaving a legacy. That's it. Mm. A legacy for my family, for my community. There was, a, there, was a, there was a man called Muhammad Isa who did all of these things. A few weeks ago, I was in the Isa Cultural Center. I gave them all my books. They'll be digitized. They'll be available on the database. So by, by the time I'm gone from this earth, I have all these literature behind me. Mm. So that's enough. Mm. That's enough. Mm. And, and, and this is like a, a charity, if you think about it. Yes. Because the tax of, uh, of knowledge is given that knowledge. What are you grateful for in your life? Ah, I'm grateful for many things that I, I, I cannot uh, list over here. I'm grateful to so many people in my mm. life. Mm. There are so mm. many people in my life. Uh, and if I want to give uh, a tribute to someone... And, and I will not be very classical, saying my parents, no. This is my cousin. He's uh, five years older than me. And he was the one who loaned, he, who loaned me some money so that I can uh, stitch two suits, buy two ties, and buy shoes and shirts for my job interviews mm. when I was in university. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 